This video describes a QRP amateur radio transceiver I built based on an article in the March 2016 issue of QST Magazine. The March 2016 issue of QST Magazine had an article by Jack Perdum, Farouk Zia, and Dennis Kidder entitled A Modular 40 Meter CW Transceiver with VFO. It describes a project to build a simple single band ham radio transceiver that supports CW Morse code sending and receiving putting out 2 to 3 watts of RF power. It features a VFO and LCD display controlled by an Arduino Nano microcontroller. It's built around the design of a direct conversion transceiver called the 49er, which was a crystal control transceiver designed by Wayne Burdick and Doug Hendricks for the NorCal QRP Club. The name comes from the fact that it supports the 40 meter band and can run on 9 volts or more of power. The design was very popular and kits of PCBs and parts are available at low cost from sellers in China. The main limitation was that it is crystal controlled and therefore limited to a single frequency. This new design replaces the crystal by an AD9850 direct digital synthesis or DDS module which is controlled by software running on an Arduino Nano to support coverage over the full 40 meter band. The use of an Arduino also allows it to drive a two-line by 16 character LCD display and a rotary encoder for tuning. The 49er board requires some modifications to use the DDS in place of a crystal and to modify an internal low-pass filter to support coverage of the full 40 meter band. To simplify construction, a PCB was offered that houses the Arduino Nano 809850 DDS module headphone, audio amplifier, and power supply regulator. I ordered the DDS PCB, a 49er kit, DDS module, LCD display, rotary encoder, and other parts needed to build up a unit. Additional information on assembling the kit was provided as a QST in-depth article downloaded from the ARRL website. The DDS PCB also came with some instructions, as did the 49er kit. Assembly was straightforward by following the approximately 25 pages of documentation in the QST in-depth document. This included changes needed to the 49er kit to support the VFO. The transceiver board has a lot of components and two toroid coils to wind. A Google group dedicated to the project was helpful in clarifying some issues, such as identifying which ferrite core was used for each coil. Next to be assembled was the Arduino Nano VFO board, which only has a few components. You need to adjust the mini buck regulator for 5 volt output before installing the Arduino and DDS module. Finally, you need to connect the LCD display, rotary encoder, headphone, code key jacks, and power connectors. I initially wired and tested it on a bench before installing it in a suitable case. The software provided as an Arduino sketch is compiled and loaded onto the Arduino Nano over USB using the Arduino IDE. For maximum tuning accuracy, you can set a calibration factor in the code so that your DDS module is very close to the indicated frequency as measured by a frequency counter or accurate receiver. I did this. Operation of the unit is simple. After turning it on, the frequency is indicated on the display and can be changed by turning the rotary encoder. The software limits the frequency to the allowable range of the 40 meter amateur radio band. It also indicates the US license class that's permitted on the frequency, for example, general. If you tap the rotary encoder, it steps through different tuning rates, so you can quickly sweep across the band in 100 kHz steps or tune slowly with as little as 10 Hz per step. The Arduino sketch I'm using has some additional features made by me and others. An analog input on the Arduino measures and displays the DC input voltage and displays a warning if it's too low or too high. A receiver incremental tuning or RIT feature was implemented. Pressing the RIT button allows you to rotate the knob and set a positive or negative offset on receive.
Without this, the transmit and receive frequencies are the same, making it inconvenient if the station you're talking to is zero beaded on your frequency. Transmit is indicated by an asterisk on the display, as well as an LED on the Arduino. If the unit's idle for some time, the LCD backlight is turned off to save power until a knob, button, or key is pressed. My version of the software can be found at the GitHub link listed in the video description. Audio output is to headphones. There's no volume control, so I use phones with an internal volume control. To transmit, you attach a code key or keyer. The unit will run from 9 volts to 13.8 volts DC. At 13.8 volts, my unit puts out almost exactly 2 watts of RF power. As a quick check of my radio and antenna, I can send a short test transmission and see that it gets picked up by the reverse beacon network. This project is a little old as I didn't get around to making a YouTube video about it until now. I think it's still of interest, although it may be a little harder to find all the required parts and information. Sensitivity is good, although it's not highly selective when the bands are active. You could improve it using an off-board audio filter such as this one if desired. As it's a direct conversion receiver, you can also receive single sideband transmissions if you want although you can only transmit CW. With only 2 or 3 watts of power, it's definitely a QRP rig, and contacts can be challenging. I hope to use it for portable operation during field day or a parks on the air activation. To close the video, I'll show some on-air signals I received, including both CW Morse code and signal sideband voice transmissions. Whiskey, whiskey, golf, uh, a little bit, but not enough. Back to that WN1F. 
Bye, 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 bye,